on alert. Uh, all police and fire agencies are putting in emergency plans. Uh, you can bet that they're all going to be working long hours no matter what the jurisdiction. Uh, we'll also see one of the government's helicopters land there. As we say that, we do want to remind you here, we're getting word uh, now that the metro stations are actually empty right now. A lot of people thinking perhaps the metro is closed. Uh, the roads are jammed, the metros are empty, and we want to remind you the metro is still running. The only stops right now that are closed are the National Airport stop and the Pentagon stop, and I also believe the Union Station stop on the red line. So obviously not stopping at the Pentagon, not stopping at, uh, at uh, Reagan National Airport just across the way there, but you can get on Metro right now. It is still running. It may be the best way uh, to, to uh, go to where you're going. Well, I'm sure I think many people are going to find it's our Beth Parker did that wherever your car is, you may not be able to get it out. So uh, that's just the reality that uh, th this, this is going to be a long day, a long, dark day, as many of the witnesses have been saying. And, of course, we're waiting for word uh, as we wait for the mayor's press conference, also waiting for word for the president. Um, the president, of course, saying before that this was at that time an apparent terrorist attack, making those remarks, Lark, I believe, before the Pentagon incident, uh, also saying that, um, that, you know, that... God bless the people who were involved and sad to say after that there was a need to look at more victims because more have been coming in right now. Right. This is having an impact all across the Washington area in terms of what has happened with government workers, in terms of schools closing early uh, from all levels, you know, from elementary up to uh, many colleges. So do take heed if you don't have to go out. Right now, though, we do want to go to our Holly Morris live at the Pentagon. Uh, Holly, what can you tell us? We got a little bit of an update here, Michael, as far as exactly what's going on at the scene here. We've seen really a lot of chopper activity. So I want to show you some of the video that we caught just moments ago with different choppers landing, different choppers leaving. And with that, I talked with an official with the Army, and he told me that there could be a couple things going on here. There could be uh, medevac helicopters that um, are, of course, transporting patients, those that are injured. But then also you have to keep in mind that the Pentagon is in a very important building. Obviously, that's an understatement. But they do have a contingency plan in case something happens here at their building. And what they do is that they have certain officials that they will then transport to an alternate location so that they can go ahead with the business that they do literally around the world. Of course, that location is undisclosed for obvious reasons. Now, the heliport is on the other side, which is kind of near uh, where the impact was. So we've seen a lot of that chopper activity on the side where we are. We are in the north parking lot of the Pentagon. And you'll have to uh, excuse my crude drawing, but this is exactly how the major drew it for me if you want to get an idea of exactly where the damage is. The Pentagon, of course, five sides like that. Then at each one of these points, there are basically corridors that go off like this. Now, this would be corridor three and corridor five. And basically the major said the major part of the impact where they're seeing the most damage is right around this area, which would be across corridor four and on either side. I talked with another uh, officer from the Army and he said, from what he understood, it was in the area of the Pentagon where they recently renovated. It was the one side where they renovated and that from what he understood, that area was mostly um, contained with Army divisions there, though we are no, or they have confirmed, I should say, that both civilian and military personnel were working in the area. As for the triage that was set it outside, they confirmed for us that they treated 12 different people there. There are still people inside that they are working on, and of course, they're still battling the fire. And the telltale sign, as it has been since this morning, is the black smoke that you're seeing, which indicates that that fire is still raging on the inside, and they're having a hard time putting that fire out. But right now, things have kind of died down on the outside here. All the personnel that were standing around and watching have since gone on, and we saw several buses. Um, actually, I think they were from Fort Myer because that's what it said on the side of the bus. We had several buses that came by, and I asked one of the drivers what he was told he was supposed to do, and he said, well, I'm here to pick up some people and take them to some other location. So it's kind of quiet. That was uh, Holly Morris uh, live outside the Pentagon. Uh, we should also report now that the AP is now reporting, at least according to CNN sources, that uh, suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden did give warning uh, of uh, perhaps a massive attack and that this warning was received uh, three weeks ago. So that um, a lot of speculation that Osama bin Laden might be someone responsible for this uh, reports now that perhaps he may have given a, a warning of a massive attack three weeks ago. 
Right now, we want to go to a report from Will Thomas on Metro problems. Will Thomas coming to you from the Friendship Heights Metro Station. We just went down below. Very calm down there, very few passengers, but we just met one of the Metro bus operators, Tez Sims, is that correct? And you said you were riding the Metro from the DuPont Station, and what was it like? Uh, actually, it was, quant it was calm on, on the Metro rail, but on the bus side and on the streets, it's just pandemonium. Absolutely pandemonium. People is just horrified at what happened there in New York, and. Uh, uh, that don't know exactly what bus to take, of course. Uh, now, sir, when you say pandemonium, describe that. Uh, Are people actually, doing things that they shouldn't be, just kind of shell-shocked? Shell-shocked. Uh, uh, they're hysterical because, they don't, because they, they, their offices obviously have closed down there and they didn't know what route to take, what buses were running or how they were running. Uh, it was just, it's just an awful scene down there. Now, when did you get off duty today? I was get, now. <laughs> So uh, what were you telling passengers as they were getting on this morning? Actually, just be calm. Just be patient. Patient is virtue. Okay. Thank you so much, All right, sir. Now. All right. Again, seems to be very calm on the Metro line where we are at the Friendship Heights station. Some of the other passengers said they're seeing people walk the lines. For instance, they're just walking along Connecticut Avenue. Of course, we're going to continue to check hot spots throughout the city, and we'll check back with you just as soon as we can. For now, I'm Will Thomas at the Friendship Heights Metro station in northwest Washington. Now back to you. We want to go now to our Karen Bray Houston, who is downtown at Freedom Plaza. Karen, what's happening there? It would normally be the lunch hour downtown D.C. is starting to look like a ghost town. The traffic jams we told you about earlier today, if you look over my shoulder here down towards the Capitol, they are largely gone. The federal and local workers uh, who have been evacuated from the buildings down here, they took their cars, they took the subway, uh, they walked to get away from what was largely the unknown. It was a very orderly evacuation, uh, scary to people. Initially, they were in their cars heading into the city uh, as they got the first glimpses of something terribly wrong at the Pentagon. Clouds of black smoke, big plumes coming up from above the Pentagon. Uh, and from the bridges leading into the city, that is what you saw. Uh, entryways into the Pentagon were immediately closed down. The government was closed. Workers were told to leave. And you could see emergency vehicles, uh, police cars and vans, the Secret Service, ambulances uh, taking victims to local hospitals were driving down the streets. Now, there was confusion, but no pandemonium as this orderly uh, evacuation of the city happened and as the police as the people in town began to try to uh, digest what was going on many had heard the loud boom from the explosions at the pentagon there was uh, a lot of confusion among the people tourists especially downtown trying to sort out reports that they were hearing early reports that there had been a car bomb at the state department which turned out not to be true uh, we are here now along Pennsylvania Avenue. It's very quiet now, but uh, as you can see, a very heightened sense of security with uh, police uh, up and down the streets. Um, of officials there in the hall. And here is the president. Here, it, I'm sorry, this is the president to make this statement. This is Barksdale. This is tape, folks, not live. folks it appears there we saw the president start to come in uh, uh, that of course was videotape and uh, that was a raw tape feed as it was coming in it takes a while often for levels to be set and for everybody receiving to uh, get clear that the picture and sound are coming in properly and it is not uncommon at broadcast facilities when tape like this is being fed we're gonna have another go at it here now and, and see if this time we can hear this taped remark from the president Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. We see what's happening here. This is a videotape being fed from a remote location, and we are trying to get a clear signal and keep it from breaking up and get it onto the air. So sometimes this takes a little bit of time, and uh, we will de definitely do what we can to bring it to you as soon as, uh, as soon as we can see it and hear it clearly. Um, that was the President of the United States. Here he comes again, same tape, see if we can hear it and see it more clearly this time. Freedom itself was attacked this morning 
by a faceless coward and freedom will be defended. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. That, that concludes the president's taped comments from Barksdale Military Base in Louisiana. The president of the United States speaking just a short time ago. We know not now where the president is. You heard him say that the United States military is on full alert. All security precautions could be taken, that he's been in touch with House, Senate leaders, and other members of the administration, as well as with foreign leaders. He said we will hunt down and punish those who are responsible for what he called this cowardly act. Uh, that concludes Fox News Channel's presentation and Fox News' coverage of this presidential statement. Back to you in New York. This has been a Fox News special report. We're back live now here in the Fox Five Studios in Washington. It has been an extraordinary morning. We're joining up our colleagues Tracy Neal and Mike Landis. Um, I have never seen a morning like today, guys. I can tell you that. Of course, we were here during the morning program when all of this began to evolve, those two towers, then the attack against the Pentagon. Senator Hagel called it the second bombing of Pearl Harbor. Just exactly. one thing after another. You no, know, I was thinking today that any one of these events by itself sure. would have been a, horrific. A, a, a horrific. The hijacking of four separate airlines. Absolutely. Uh, one, that video, which will live with me for a long time, there that plane going in to the, the World Trade Center there, that, that the second impact there, uh, we couldn't believe it. And at first, when this first began and the first witness interviews were coming up, someone said, well, it came out. And I kept thinking, well, maybe there was just an explosion up there. No. But then who could have believed uh, what was going on, and of course, with the Pentagon. And it's uh, the kind of situation now, I think it's interesting that the president has not come back directly to Washington. Uh, Lark and I were discussing, he may decide to take to the aerial command post and remain. They may figure that's the safest place for him to be right now. So they know what's going on. That's probably the number one priority is keeping him safe and making sure that this is in fact the end of the bombings, the planes, and then at this point, the, probably the toughest part, going into those buildings, going through all that rubble, mm -hmm. seeing if, there, if there's any chance of any survivors being in there. I, you know, Tracy, I grew up in New York City. To see the, uh, the, the Twin Towers come down, oh, yes. yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a part of your life. You just you can't believe it. And you think in terms of how horrified we were at Oklahoma City, Absolutely. how horrified we were in 1993 with the first World Trade Center, and now those events actually seem to pale. We saw the aftermath of Oklahoma City, and we're seeing this happening right before our eyes, which is the most unbelievable thing. Hollywood has been doing this for years, and to see it actually happening, look at this as the tower comes down, right. it's just, I, I, there's Surreal. just no word to, that's right. It's, it, it's so incredible, incredible. You can't grasp it. You really can't hold on to it. The and two of you have done a remarkable job following this this morning. Well, obviously we the events are it. still unfolding yes, and are. so uh, many things to still follow. Many people affected here in the Washington area and so uh, we know that you're going to be doing your best to bring them the up Absolutely. to the minute information. So, well, so. we want to thank both of okay. you and yes, we'll take you. it from here. Okay, okay. Got All right. it. we'll check in. Really. Let's know how we can help. Absolutely. Right.
Of course, Fox 5 has been covering this from every possible angle. We're following our, all of our network contacts. Uh, we have uh, crews all across the country that will be bringing information as it unfolds as to this horrific day in the history of America where terrorism has come home on our soil. Let's go to Fox 5's Karen Gray Houston at 13th and Penn. I understand, Karen, that you have Jack Evans with you live. I do, Jack Evans, a councilman from uh, D.C. And uh, it's really ironic that this is happening right now. The D.C. Council just moving back into its historic presence presence on Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, just your thoughts about today's event. Oh, it's just such a tragic event and uh, our thoughts and prayers in the district go out to all the families uh, who have lost people in this and uh, it just shows you how vulnerable we are and uh, clearly it's a real tragedy for our country, for our city as well. You must have some personal thoughts on who could have orchestrated this and also on how did we get caught off guard like this? Yeah. Well, clearly all the thoughts are looking to, uh, you know, the Ben Ladens of the world who uh, hate America, who tried once before to bomb the World Trade Towers, and, and were successful in bringing it down this time. And, um, you know, it's so hard in this day and age where we have thousands of airplanes flying, communications that are instant, uh, even for our national security agencies, to try and monitor this and trying to protect us against it. Uh, clearly there's going to have to be a thorough analysis of how this happened, what we can do to uh, try and alleviate it in the past, in the future. But, but again, uh, in an open society like America, which we want to keep it an open society, um, it's going to be very difficult to stop people who have a suicidal, and you have to remember that, a suicidal intent on their mind. I, this is being described as a second Pearl Harbor. Like, are, are we supposed to respond as if we are going to war? Well, I, I, again, it's going to be a clear balance between uh, trying to keep an open society and trying to have a society where everyone is safe. Uh, it's not Pearl Harbor. The Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. We knew Japan was responsible. In this instance, uh, whoever's responsible is elusive, almost uncatchable. And uh, again, it's going to be a very difficult response for America to either find who's responsible and to continue to protect us in the future. Can we talk a little bit about the evacuation? Uh, we've all been downtown. This is a very orderly evacuation of the, the federal and, and local workers. There was no pandemonium. People didn't panic. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Well, it was extremely ordinary, uh, organized, and, and, and frankly, I think there's a lot of credit goes to the people who work here, to the police forces, to the government in general. I was right here at Ground Zero at the Wilson Building, and uh, when the evacuation started around 10 o'clock, uh, there were masses of people and cars in the streets, but everyone was calm. There was no horn honking. Uh, the police responded in full force, once in the Wilson Building and all over the place, directing traffic. And um, I think in, maybe in Washington, people are a little more accustomed to uh, evacuations, whether it be snowstorms or great tragedies like this. But whatever, it worked. Uh, we stand here now, three hours later, there's not a soul in sight, not a car in sight. And so the evacuation worked quite well. And one last question. How soon can we bounce back from this? Well, I think the country itself will bounce back immediately. I think our security agencies and our military are dispersed enough that even an attack on the Pentagon is not going to by any means uh, shut them down. But I think the long-term psychological damage is enormous. Uh, again, the tragedy in New York is indescribable to bring down the two world trade towers. And uh, how we protect against that in the future Again, trying to maintain an open society is going to be the challenge we, we in government and we in America face. Okay, thank you, D.C. Councilman Jack Evans. Uh, here again at what we're now being uh, calling ground zero. And uh, as we've said before, the FBI warned us this could happen in Washington, D.C., and unfortunately it is. Live at Freedom Plaza, Karen Gray, Houston, Fox 5 News. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Karen. Jack Evans, a man who's been in this city for a very long time, bringing up a very good point. This is an open society, very hard to stop someone who wants to commit this type of terrorism, especially when you're dealing with suicide bombers. We're still looking at a video here of them trying to get those fires out at the Pentagon, where they hit a long corridor four, as Holly Morris was showing us a little bit early on. Just incredible that this is happening, and that word is going to be overused today because there just are so few that would describe something as horrific as this is. That's another word that will end up being yeah. overused today as well. Let's go through a quick timeline for you so we can catch you up to speed as to what's happened. If you've just uh, gotten moving here, let's, let's give you what's happened here. Uh, there's a plane, a, uh, an American Airlines plane, crashing into the tower of the World Trade Center in Manhattan just before 9 Eastern time, and then a second plane. And a lot of Americans, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of Americans, saw the second plane crash into the second tower of the World Trade Center shortly after 9. Now, right after that, we had President Bush uh, speaking in Sarasota, Florida. He called that an apparent terrorist attack and a national tragedy. And then right after that, there was the explosion at the Pentagon. 
They think an aircraft hit there too, and we're still getting information on that as to what actually caused it. Then the plane crash in, uh, well, it's going to be awfully hard to see that uh, with that, uh, as small as that is, but take our word for it that we have the plane crash in uh, Pennsylvania that took place, and uh, that was one in which uh, it was, it was uh, a United Airlines aircraft. Uh, passengers on board, we don't know why it went down, and the United lost another aircraft as well in that timeline. Uh, we have had uh, situation after situation here in Washington, D.C. as well, where we had uh, problems that uh, took place uh, also in the, uh, obviously at the Pentagon, and then also at the State Department. Absolutely. I want to bring you up to date on the, on the very latest information as we get it. We are being told at this moment that two U.S. warships and the National Guard have now been dispatched to the New York Harbor. That is the latest word coming in. Again, two warships and the National Guard dispatched to the New York Harbor. Of course, because of the situation there with the collapse of the two World Trade Center towers. All forces across the United States are on alert at this point. Uh, the National Guard in Virginia on alert. Uh, everyone is standing by to see what's going to happen next. We have no way of knowing what's going on. Uh, we want to talk to uh, uh, Bob Barnard now, who is at Connecticut and Penn. Uh, Bob, what's happening down there now? It looks like a ghost town down there. It's becoming eerily quiet, uh, Mike and Tracy. This is Connecticut Avenue looking north to DuPont Circle which, uh, oh, in the last couple of hours was a crazy scene of, of controlled chaos as people were trying to get out of the downtown area. Many offices, the federal government, in a sense, uh, evacuated, shut down office buildings, deserted at this hour. We spoke to a gentleman earlier who works for a Wall Street company uh, down here in Washington, watching on, on television sets in their offices uh, as the horror of, unfolded in New York. And you see here now that 17th Street heading toward the White House, <laughs> Excuse me. And that has been closed. I spoke to Uniform Secret Service uh, traffic people, who the two gentlemen you see there, who have taken over this intersection. Because, frankly, even though it's, it's uh, less crowded now and it's under somewhat control, people are disregarding the lights and uh, the officers are trying to help them through. And basically, they are closing streets. And uh, that changes by the minute, I was told by a Uniform Secret Service officer just a short time ago. That's uh, 17th Street, though, um, beyond K, between K and I. And it is closed. Basically, uh, an area three, four, five blocks uh, in radius of the White House has been evacuated. The Treasury Department early this morning, Commerce, uh, the uh, State Department, and uh, Interior Departments. And this was a madhouse earlier. We can show you some videotape that we shot around 10 o'clock this morning as uh, authorities were trying to clear out the area around 17th and Constitution. It was quite a scene because people, frankly, were stunned. They were not panicked. They knew something bad had happened. Most of them knew something bad had happened in uh, New York City. But quite a few uh, at that hour did not know um, that the buildings had collapsed and uh, were already, though, on their way home. And uh, so it was, it was a, a madhouse between the hours of 10 and noon, and it has been fairly quiet since then. But Mike and Tracy, as you're seeing on, on this videotape here, we saw fire trucks in a, what they call a code E mode. And the code E mode was that they were uh, on their way back to their firehouses, told to go back to all firehouses and stand by. Now, of course, uh, immediately after the, uh, the attack in New York City, people thought that perhaps the White House or the Washington Monument might be targeted. And as we all know now, it appears a commercial airliner was hijacked and uh, crashed into the Pentagon. And that is what uh, uh, created uh, the move here just to clear out the downtown Washington area. It continues at this hour. And as you can see, Mike and Tracy, uh, most of the people have uh, uh, gotten out of town. And uh, just a few more stragglers at this point. And I think you see in tape of the fire fire trucks there is, uh, you know, nobody knew what, what was going on. We heard two explosions at one point at about 10.15 in the vicinity of the Lincoln Memorial. And people were saying, oh my goodness, something's happened at the Lincoln Memorial. We went over there, saw that nothing had happened. And at that point, uh, people were telling us that it apparently was a sonic boom because we were seeing fighter aircraft, no other aircraft as you would normally see uh, in the downtown area, uh, but fighter aircraft. And again, I believe you're looking live here now as we see what uh, Connecticut and Kay looks like here, uh, becoming eerily quiet, Mike and Tracy, as people are stunned about today's events and knowing that Washington, as far as Arlington and, and the Pentagon, uh, was in the terrorist target. Let me ask you a quick question. It seems as though people are not panicking. People are sad, they're upset, but they don't seem to be panicked. No, not panicked. And as you look around, some people, uh, you'll see, well, maybe now they know that the buildings had collapsed in New York City. But uh, at about noontime, 
there were people smiling, joking, and my sense was that they knew something had bad had happened, but had not seen the pictures. Yes. I don't think you could see those pictures of the tower, right. the one in particular coming down, and, and be anything else but stunned. And I think some people, maybe before now, hadn't been aware that that, were, that was happening and were on their way home. People are just quiet. I yes. think they're just stunned, Mike. Yes. All right, thanks very much. Bob Barnett. You know, uh, Bob was talking about people there, and I saw a couple of people walking around on their cell phones. And, yes. and just a word, uh, Verizon had been asking people about an hour ago to stay off the cell phones, mm -hmm. if you can, unless it's a real emergency right. and, you, you know, you just want to tell your family you're okay and then hang up, you know, um, because emergency personnel is having a hard time getting through on that. We also want to tell you that Howard University is now closed. Essential people are being told to stay in place awaiting instructions from their superiors. So Howard University closed. Catholic University GW That's also right. closed. That's right. Yeah. Let's go to Audrey Barnes. Fox 5's Audrey Barnes is on the northwest side of the Pentagon. Audrey, I know the situation there is still quite tense. Very tense and uh, Tracy, as you look behind me, you can see that this fire is still not out. It's been burning some three and a half hours now and there's still an enormous amount of emergency equipment, firefighting equipment on the scene here. And just a few moments ago we saw what appear to be some kind of high-level official being ushered out of the Pentagon uh, in a little caravan police escort out of the area and that's been happening routinely throughout the morning as they try to get people out of that area now we talked to a mechanical uh, maintenance engineer here at the Pentagon who had a chance to look inside the building and he decide, uh, described a scene of mass destruction in there just a wreckage all along the corridor for that we mentioned which was what the point of impact when that plane went in this morning and it is still burning at this hour. Now, he says that there are up to a thousand people who work in that general area. So we're still trying to determine exactly how many casualties there have been so far. We do know that at least 30 people have been taken from the scene and transported to area hospitals for treatment. And we're told that at least a dozen people with some very serious injuries are still being treated on the scene in the sort of triage area uh, on the lawn of the Pentagon. So there are still obviously dozens and dozens of people inside the building that have yet to be rescued. Now that's the latest here. Uh, we're at uh, 110 at 27. This area is still shut down. There are a lot of Pentagon employees milling around. Uh, no one is able to get past this point uh, while that firefighting mission continues. All Tracy right. and Mike. Audrey Barnes, thank you for that update from the northwest side of the Pentagon. Triage situation still there assessing the injuries. Yes, and uh, of course we will get them, that information to you as soon as we can. We have crews covering the story from A to Z. Uh, the president again saying just a few moments ago that uh, America is ready to do whatever it takes, whatever is necessary to keep America and Americans safe. Uh, certainly there is a big question about that when so many things could happen all at once. Uh, major jetliners, four of them, crashing within hours of one another. Two into buildings, uh, at least one into the Pentagon. The fourth crash, we're not sure exactly where it went down. United Airlines hasn't told us that yet. Uh, so we're trying to, to get more information on that for you. Again, the video you're looking at is the uh, effort to put out the fire at the Pentagon quite a scene there today. And I can tell you, uh, across the area, let me give you some idea of what's happening after these attacks. In Maryland, tightened security throughout that state. Security uh, heightened at Andrews Air Force Base, uh, Baltimore Washington International Airport, taking arrivals, no departing flights in Virginia. Uh, Navy installations throughout Hampton Roads, uh, home of the world's largest Navy base, placed under increased security, as you can imagine. I'm sure that's the case uh, all over the country with uh, any federal buildings, any uh, military ins installations. Uh, let's see, the 192nd Virginia Air National Guard and the fighter squadron, um, all of their fighter jets are on patrol. Uh, along the East Coast. They were put on alert with orders to down any unauthorized aircraft in New York, as you can imagine. Um, security clamped down across that state. Uh, two warships, as we reported to you just moments ago, have now been ordered to the New York Harbor along with the National Guard. Yeah, you know, the interesting part is, is that uh, someone made the, the analogy a moment ago about uh, talking about it being the second Pearl Harbor. On the one hand, certainly we have been challenged in, in uh, a terrible, terrible way here, but that enemy is so elusive. We don't know who it is exactly. Of course, the prime suspect in a situation like this, the usual suspect in this case, would be Osama bin Laden who is uh, blamed for trying to uh, blow up the World uh, Trade Center towers in 93 was unsuccessful and that apparently there had been a, a videotape that had been going. You're looking at video now of, of New York and the Trade Center towers, which both collapsed 
shortly after those uh, planes hit there. One of the plane crashes we actually saw on the air, Tracy. That's right. You're actually looking at live pictures right now, the aftermath of the, the two towers that collapsed at the World Trade Center. Um, I can give you some information on the airlines. It was uh, American Airlines Flight 77, a Boeing uh, 757 from uh, Dulles to Los Angeles. That's one of the airplanes involved. Uh, American Airlines Flight 11, a Boeing 767 from Boston to Los Angeles. Flight 11 was the first one that hit the first tower, and uh, the, the next aircraft from Dulles is the one that hit the second tower. That's the one that everyone saw on television today. A they state did. of emer emergency, I'm going to cut you off, Mike, for a second, has just been declared uh, in D.C. So just to let you know, a state of emergency declared in D.C. And we understand that Fox 5's Will Thomas is standing by live. Uh, Will, where are you? And uh, bring us up to date from your vantage point. Good afternoon again, Will Thomas from DuPont Circle. Just about 45 minutes ago, this section of Connecticut Avenue that leads right into DuPont Circle was just a parking lot. Lots of people leaving their downtown offices. Uh, as you know, uh, government workers have been asked to leave. Lots of people on foot haven't been able to get onto the metro at some stops. What we're seeing now is a much calmer situation here. A lot of people have left the area. This man just stopped Allen Beach. You work just north just of the circle. The of the circle yeah. What did it look like just a few minutes ago? Well, half an hour ago when we came to lunch, this place with people walking around like crazy. And over here on Connecticut Avenue, the cars were just packed going northbound. You said this was reminiscent of another time. Oh, yes, reminiscent of the riots of 68. At that time, I worked down Connecticut Avenue. And the cars were just packed going up and people were walking. This is what it reminded me of this morning here. We interviewed a Metro worker a little while ago. He said, I have never seen such pandemonium. People crying, people looking shell-shocked, certainly being obedient. Nothing disobedient, but just people upset. Is that what you saw as well? Well, I saw certainly pe people walking, and they certainly didn't have the, the look of happiness all over them, that's for sure. sure. All right, Allen Beach, thank you. Stay thank safe. You. Again, DuPont Circle right now, pretty calm as far as traffic is concerned. The circle itself, if you want to pan off me, is pretty busy. But Connecticut Avenue leading from uh, Pennsylvania, K Street, uptown, northwest, fairly smooth right now. Things are beginning to thin out as people leave work. We're going to continue to travel throughout the city and bring you updates throughout the afternoon. For now, I'm Will Thomas in DuPont Circle. Now back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Will Thomas. We're going to join uh, Sean Yancey now by phone. Sean is our newest reporter on the staff. Uh, Weekend Anchor and is also covering the story for us. Mayor Williams just had a news conference in which a state of emergency was declared. Tell us more, Sean. That's right. We're at a 14th and New at the Reed Center where the mayor just wrapped up a press conference. He did indeed declare a state of emergency for the entire district. Basically, he wants everyone off of the streets unless uh, you are in an emergency vehicle, unless you have some important business like you need to pick up a child from school or uh, some other life-threatening or emergency reason to be on the streets. He says he is in touch with the White House. Uh, some National Guard members will be called in to help monitor the traffic situation within the district and keep the streets clear. This is all sort of a just-in-case, uh, just to be prepared, um, because there have been uh, no major problems actually within the district itself. In case there are to be some, the state of emergency was declared so that uh, emergency personnel are prepared and can get to where they need to be. Uh, the mayor also talked about uh, there have been a number of uh, false reports about car bombs and uh, suspicious packages around the area. He said none of those things are true right now. Again, a state of emergency declared to keep people off of the streets so emergency vehicles can get through. Um, we will bring you more information as we get it. For now, reporting live from the Reed Center, I'm Sean Yancey. Back to you. Thank you, Sean. The Metropolitan Police Department has deployed 100 officers at key intersections throughout to try to help move traffic through. We've also been told that the D.C. National Guard is now on standby to help if needed, and that helps with the uh, declaration of a state of emergency to get everyone in position just in case they are needed. Right. We're also going to report to you now from the Associated Press that the Virginia Hospital Center has been warned to expect more victims from today's terrorist attack. Let's talk to Paul Wagner now, who's at the FBI field office, the Washington field office. What are you learning down there, Paul, about what's going on? Well, Mike, for the last uh, couple of hours, I've just been walking back and forth between uh, D.C. police headquarters and this field office here. Uh, this field office is completely cordoned off by tape and uh, agents uh, with machine guns and shotguns guarding the building. Uh, also, right next door to this office is the U.S. Attorney's Office, which is shut down as well. And uh, at this point, 
We're not getting a lot of information. We know that D.C. Police Chief Charles Ramsey has declared a state of emergency. He has ordered all officers to come in that were off duty. They are now on duty. They'll be working in 12-hour shifts. And he has been directing uh, the operations from the command center inside D.C. Police Headquarters, staying in touch with the ATF, the uh, FBI, and the Secret Service. At this point, uh, there's not a lot of information, not a lot of new information that we are getting. Uh, at this point, we do know that uh, there has been some uh, National Guard officers that have been arriving at police headquarters. We don't know exactly what they are doing here other than perhaps going in to confer with Chief Ramsey and go into the operations center. But they are dressed in their uh, military uh, dress, uh, their uh, uh, battle fatigues, if you will, or uh, camouflage. Uh, going into the building. Down here in this area, the Judiciary Square area, it's very, very quiet now. Uh, the streets are all closed. Occasionally we do hear the wail of sirens. Uh, that had been going on for hours. That's all we heard was sirens wailing all up and down this area, all over these streets. And the police channels were filled with chatter of uh, suspicious packages, suspicious people. Uh, there has been some helicopter traffic coming through here. We've seen some Army helicopters landing down on the mall. The U.S. Park Police has been flying in this area. And just a few minutes ago, I spoke with a, a man named Reuben Pemberton, who witnessed the plane going into the side of the Pentagon. We did an on-camera interview with him, but he did tell me that it was so shocking that he thought he was in a dream, that it was a jet that came over the top of his head and then just slammed right into the side of the Pentagon. He then described utter chaos, and then another plane coming, a uh, four-propeller uh, plane that came towards the Pentagon, flew through the smoke, and then veered off and went back up the river. Uh, he said it, it, it was just unbelievable to see. And uh, not long after that, uh, as the smoke billowed out of the Pentagon, he said military officials came out and started pushing people back. There was a lot of chaos and panic is the way he described it. Mike? Okay, Paul, thanks very much. And we want to tell our viewers now just to get you up to speed as to what you're seeing here. Sometimes we have file video that's playing, things that were shot a little bit earlier of uh, this day and this incredible uh, action that's taken place. So at some point, uh, we'll, we'll try to keep you up to speed as to which are the file pictures you're looking at and which are the live pictures. You can see the little live button down there on the bottom there that says you're looking at the Pentagon, the efforts to put out the fire there, and those are live pictures. As Paul was speaking, we were seeing some of the video that uh, was earlier today, which was just absolutely incredible. Uh, again, with some of these phone reports, you'll see this video, and we'll try to keep you clear as to what you're looking at. And sometimes the video, of course, will be of New York, and sometimes it'll be of exactly. what's happening here exactly. in Washington. Yeah. Uh, let's go now to Allison Seymour, and I understand that Allison is on the phone with us from Inova Blood Donor Services. And Allison, I can only imagine that donations are needed on this day. Tracy, it, this, this outpouring of humanity is really something in the face of this tragedy. They do need blood. This center services 11 area hospitals, and currently they're looking to service other hospitals that are getting some of the injured, namely Arlington. So it is a very busy day here. Uh, I understand that we have an 800 number that, uh, that we can give out for there anyone. Is. It's 1-800-BLOOD-SAVES, S-A-V-E-S. 1-800-BLOOD-SAVE. You see it on the screen right now if you would like to call to find out about making a donation. What is the sense there, Allison? Have you talked to people? Or is there a sense of let's rally together and do whatever we can? The people that are in line and they are patiently waiting, it is really something to see. They're looped around this building. They are inside this building. Everywhere you can see people are waiting patiently. And the sense seems to be in this time of uncertainty this is at least what they can do. So people are happy to be in line. If there is no complaining or no one, you know, trying to get ahead of anybody else, it's just people working together. And this center, they say, typically sees about 50 people a day. Uh, they had two blood mobiles, uh, if you will, planned for today. But indeed, with all of this outpouring, they are having to turn some people away because Type O blood is the universal blood type, mm -hmm. and that's what they need right now. So this center will be open for 24 hours, but uh, right now they are suggesting that people with other blood types come back later in the week. So if that gives you any indication about how many people are here, and still with that, the line doesn't seem to at all uh, diminish, even with sending some people home. Well, if there's any solace to a situation like that, it's that 
usually people tend to, to rally together. You were looking at videotape of uh, Washington Hospital Center as the, the choppers were beginning to bring in the injured. Of course, that's the home to MedStar. We're still trying to get a clear picture of how many people were hurt here in Washington. We know that the, the number of fatalities across the country in these uh, different events that have taken place, the plane crashing in Pittsburgh, the Twin Towers in New York, uh, the people that were on the aircraft, we know a little bit about that. Let's go to John Henrahan to find out more about what's going on locally. He's at Arlington Hospital. John, what's the story there? What are you hearing about uh, those who have been hurt? Mike, the official patient count here at Arlington Hospital from the Pentagon is 26 patients. None of them has died. They are all alive. In fact, right now, none of them is considered critical. They are suffering from various uh, injuries, from fractures to shortness of breath. I saw two people who you could describe as shell-shocked. Some people actually were injured while helping rescue the more seriously injured. They were burned and they were cut. Uh, I talked to one person who refused to be identified by either rank or service branch who said she worked in the uh, Pentagon, uh, or was there at the time. The whole building shook when it happened. They were ordered almost immediately to evacuate in, into the main courtyard where she pitched in to help uh, with uh, physicians who were trying to triage people. At that point, um, they, another uh, gentleman came out and announced that there was a possible other plane en route for an attack, and they ordered everyone to leave the Pentagon, including the patients, uh, to be at least 500 yards away. They did that. Um, she was pressed into service by a physician who was trying to load a very seriously injured woman into a commandeered car. He said, does anyone here know where Arlington Hospital is? She raised her hand, she was put in the car and wound up here. The woman was in very poor shape, she said. Um, all she could hear was gasping from the back uh, seat. On the plus side of the ledger, uh, we are told at least two patients are, quote, ready for discharge here at Arlington Hospital. And in fact, I just saw a patient leave she declined uh, an interview before television cameras, and of course we respected her privacy. Um, so, uh, the bottom line is 26 patients have been taken to Arlington Hospital. The worst patients, we believe, were taken to Washington Hospital Center because that is a burn center. So far, no one among the patients at Arlington has died, and none at this moment are in critical condition. One more thing, Arlington Hospital is putting out a call for blood. Um, if you can give blood at Arlington Hospital, come to the hospital in the Hazel Auditorium. They are set up here. Or you can go to a Red Cross blood center or to another local hospital, which actually might be better to keep the streets clear in the vicinity of this hospital. The traffic, which has been gridlocked in Arlington for hours, is beginning to loosen up here. So if anyone comes here to give blood, do not park on George Mason Drive. Park on side streets and walk in, because some ambulances may still be coming. John, I want to hold you up here, but just very quickly, can you confirm something for us? We had heard earlier that there was concern about the fact that these patients that were coming into Arlington Hospital were having trouble breathing, and I understand that at some point they were passing out these cotton masks to some of the people who were there for concern as to why they were having trouble breathing, and, and of course the ugly term nerve gas uh, came up, and of course there's no way to confirm that, and we haven't heard anything at all about it. We're looking perhaps for you to see if you can give us an idea whether that was a valid uh, story or not. That's it. That is correct. We reported this story earlier. I was here when the masks were handed out, and, and they upgraded the gloves from the regular uh, sort of brownish gloves to very heavy purple gloves for the physicians and nurses in the receiving area. One nurse told reporters that there was concern that so many patients were complaining of shortness of breath that there was the possibility of either biological or chemical agents involved in the attack, although they had seen no evidence of that. And the spokesman for the hospital who talked with us 20 minutes ago repeated the same. There is no evidence of that. She poo-pooed the story, uh, but uh, we actually saw a change in the way they were dressed at the receiving entrance in the emergency room. Uh, so there, I think there was something to the concern, but there is no evidence of biological or uh, chemical contamination. They were just concerned, and they dressed their medical personnel in heavier stuff. John, thanks very much for, for getting the information to us. And, of course, we know you're on top of the story. We'll have more for us a little bit later on. Tracy. We're going to go to another phone call, this time from Lieutenant Commander Kate Miller from the Navy, Muller from uh, Navy Public Affairs. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you bring us up to date uh, from the Navy standpoint? I really don't have any information on what's going on down at the building. What I do have is a toll-free number 
which we really need for Navy and Marine Corps Pentagon workers to call into to report their status so we can get an accurate accounting of everyone who got out of the building. I think you have that number. Can you go ahead and give it to us, please? It's 1-877-663-6300. Let me make sure I have that right. It's 877-663-6772, uh, and that is the number you'd like people, uh, Navy personnel, to call in and report their status so that you can uh, get a clear figure, a clear idea of um, account for everyone, personnel. That's true, and that's both Navy and Marine Corps, military and civilian Pentagon workers. All right. Thanks so much. Is there any other information you can pass along to us at Not this at point? Not at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking about uh, this incident at the Pentagon. You've been looking at video of the firefighting that's still going on there. The impact that took place here was so severe, we are told. If you've seen a picture of the top of the Pentagon, the five-sided structure, you see that there are five rings that go toward the center. We are told that the impact was so severe that it not only tore down part of the wall, an area that had just been redone, we understand, just uh, uh, renovated, uh, but it actually got all the way into the inner rings into the courtyard. That is an amazing, an amazing uh, crash. And what we don't know, of course, are how many people were actually involved. We've seen the folks who have come uh, and been to the hospitals. John told us about some of those folks. We know the, about the folks at the other hospital facility we spoke to, but we still don't have a clear image of that. And we also don't have a clear image of the aircraft itself. Uh, what was it? Who did it belong to? Who was on board? Uh, we know when it happened, and we know that it was uh, just a, an unbelievable incident. As you can see here, hours later, the fire is still going on. It has moved throughout an awful lot of areas of the Pentagon at this point. As we told you a little while ago, a state of emergency declared in the district. Uh, we got an update from one of our reporters on uh, the information from the mayor. We understand that as soon as that press conference was over at the Reef Center at 14th and U, the mayor was escorted quickly away from the scene by Secret Service. We are also told that the district will be keeping us up to date uh, every hour. So as we get that information, we will be passing it directly along to you. And I also want you to stand by because we are going to be getting a Capitol Hill police briefing, an update from Capitol Hill police at two o'clock. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going on with Metro right now. One of the concerns was that they, as they let everybody go home and sent them home, uh, whether the streets would be jammed, the Metro would be jammed. Elizabeth Leamy is on the phone with us now to give us an update on what's going on with Metro. Hi, Mike. I actually rode the Metro from the stop nearest to our station, which is Friendship Heights on the red line transfer to Metro Center, and now I'm at the Stadium Armory stop. And the Metro, to me, was surprisingly light. Apparently, a lot of the passengers I spoke with thought that the Metro had been shut down entirely and then later figured out that there are actually, you know, most stations are open. So anybody who's on the highways and byways struggling to get anywhere right now might consider Metro as an option. They're also doing a pretty good job in the stations of putting up on those new electronic monitoring signs information about stations that are closed, alternative bus service, etc. Now, one very startling sight as I exited the Stadium Armory Station, Metro Transit cops actually standing around carrying what looked to be machine guns or submachine guns. That's certainly not a sight you normally see in our free society. Um, let me give you a little bit of detailed information because it does seem like what the officials at Metro are putting out is a little bit different from what you get when you're actually down in the system. Um, because there's no yellow line service between L'Enfant Plaza and the Pentagon across the river, people are actually having to take the long way, take the blue line all the way around the city and get off here at the Stadium Armory stop where I am. So there are a lot of sort of befuddled passengers trying to work their way through that. But it does work if you want to give it a try. I think we have been reporting all day that National Airport, the Pentagon, and I've also been told Union Station are closed. Certain entrances to Metro stops are closed because they're near significant or sensitive sites. Um, one of the electronic signs at one point flashed up that the L Street and Connecticut Avenue entrances to the Farragut North Station were not accessible, but it's my understanding you could still get into that stop by other means. Um, they're also running some buses, for example, between Roslyn and Pentagon City, although they did say in the signs limited bus service, so they, that may not be the best. In the meantime, some passengers told me they were thinking of getting off the metro and trying to rent a car to get home. 
that kind of thing. From what I've seen, it's worth sticking it out and giving Metro a try if you do need to get home to your friends and loved ones. Mike? Thank you very much. We were just looking at video there for a quick moment of the mall, which is uh, absolutely deserted at this point. And now you're seeing video of New York City. These are live pictures. You can still see the incredible amount of haze that's hanging in the air from the collapse of those two tires, the incredible uh, two uh, fires, I should say, and the, uh, the collapse of the two towers is what I'm trying to say here and uh, the fires that took place uh, a horrible, horrible day. And for those of you who know New York, to be able to see those towers or not see them, unbelievable. This is what it was like earlier. This is, is the part that is so, so difficult to watch. It, you can actually see in just a moment the plane as it comes into view, heading toward the tower. And there it is, the moment of impact right there before our eyes. The commercial airliner blowing up, taking part of the tower with it, and then moments later, the tower would collapse. Both of them would be gone. The World Trade Center towers in New York demolished. Someone had pointed out as that first tower was burning and before the second aircraft uh, came and hit the second tower, someone had pointed out that those buildings were designed, and look at this as it comes apart now, that they were designed to have two degrees of sway in them to be able to compensate for high winds and whatever. You can only imagine what kind of force an aircraft going at who knows how fast it was traveling, hitting one of those towers, uh, or in this case, hitting both of the towers, would uh, shake that very structure to the point that it would actually come completely apart. You can see a picture of the harbor there. That's where the warships are headed. Now, let's talk about the commercial airliners that were hijacked and then ultimately crashed. American Airlines Flight 77 had 58 passengers, four flight attendants, and two pilots. You can see the 800 number at the bottom of the screen. But please, that is for people who are concerned about loved ones. So, so please use that number only to find out information about loved ones, because as you can imagine, the airline is, is just, all of them are just being swamped right now. Uh, with people calling desperate for any information. This is flight 11 that we see listed here. That was the first American Airlines uh, flight that had been hijacked and then uh, sent right into the building. That was the first video that all America was watching early, or a lot of America was watching early this morning uh, when that second flight came along. 81 passengers and five flight attendants. And then flight uh, 93, the one that we were just talking about a moment ago, with 38 passengers, five flight attendants, and two pilots. That one crashing at a small airport about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. You're looking now again at New York Harbor, that awful, awful scene. And we thought in 93 it couldn't get any worse than no. that. Uh, a quick uh, correction, if we, if we, unless that graphic was incorrect and I misread it, uh, that was a United Airlines aircraft that crashed uh, outside right. of Pittsburgh. And I, I think our graphic may not have said the same yes, thing. Yes, it was United Flight number 93 right. that crashed. Now let's, uh, take, let's listen to uh, Pat McGrath, who has been covering this story for us today and has some new information. Pat, share with us what you found now. Well, Mike and Tracy, first of all, the, the traffic is somewhat less than it was for some people are staying back here. They're, they're afraid to take the subway. I talked to one man who said he thought a subway was a likely target, and he was going to wait to get some reassurance on that. There were some reports about possibly concern at area hotels. I visited the JW Marriott and the Willard, and they have blocked off the uh, roads uh, in front of both hotels. Security is tighter, but people are, uh, you know, they're, they're actually conducting some business hey, for their guests and serving some meals and such. But, uh, Mike, are you still there? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. I have, I'm standing here about ready to go to a Capitol Hill uh, news conference uh, briefing scheduled in a few minutes. But Congressman Jim Moran just walked by from Virginia, and uh, I'd just like to ask him a couple of questions. Uh, Congressman Moran, uh, first of all, you're, can you tell us any more than we know about what's happened here? Pat, I'm, I'm not sure the extent of uh, uh, what you know. What we have been able to discern, uh, separating facts from uh, rumor, is we obviously know the extent of the uh, but uh, the uh, damage at the trade towers, we know the plane hit the Pentagon. We don't know the extent of the death and destruction there. We know a, a gentleman, a man uh, was blown up on 15th Street with a bomb. We know that a, bo a car bomb went off at the main headquarters of the State Department. Uh, what I'm most concerned about right now is determining the extent of the destruction at the, at the uh, Pentagon. Obviously, we have uh, thousands of people there, most of them are my constituents i've got to uh i've got to figure out what we can do uh it, it, we were me of the defense appropriations committee was meeting at the time this happened at 10 a.m uh, we were trying to make the case that we ought to be moving money from the national missile defense program into uh guarding against specific terrorist attacks because we had been 
people that uh, that we should be on alert, that there may be some terrorist attacks in the making. Uh, this is far more destructive, much better coordinated, much more successful than we could have ever imagined. There have been a number of attempted terrorist attacks that have been thwarted, but this is the worst, uh, most successfully damaging uh, terrorist attack domestically in American history. And I uh, don't think we're ever going to look at things quite the same after today. Uh, Congressman, it's certainly, uh, you know, this, it's hard to know instantly what the congressional response might be. I mean, we usually talk in terms that Mike McCurry said earlier, the former White House press secretary, that a response is normally proportionate. What would be a proportionate response to what's just happened today? Well, uh, we don't believe in an eye for an eye. We're going to find out who was responsible. There will be swift retaliation. It will be appropriate. But the most important thing we've got to do is to ensure how we protect against these kinds of uh, terrorist attacks. There, there will be greater resources. There will be a lot greater prioritization of protecting ourselves uh, against terrorism. Uh, but we can't jump to conclusions. We can't speculate. Uh, this is a lawful nation, and, and we will go through judicial procedures. But uh, you can be assured that uh, we're not going to rest until uh, there is some appropriate retribution. And obviously, uh, we're going to learn from this and make sure we protect ourselves from uh, this kind of an attack ever in the future. Thank you, Congressman uh, Jim Moran from Virginia. And as he said, his constituents were uh, affected most, undoubtedly, by the uh, the. Uh, the crash in the Pentagon. Uh, right now, I am uh, one block away from Capitol Police headquarters where a uh, briefing is set to start in about four minutes. So uh, I'm going to head on over there, and I will give you the latest information as we get it from on Capitol Hill. All right. We will look for that in just a few minutes. Patrick McGrath Thank you, Pat. reporting live. Let's go now to uh, Fox 5's Paul Wagner at the FBI field office. Paul, bring us up to date. Well, actually, I'm now out in front of uh, D.C. Police Headquarters. Okay. D.C. Police Chief Charles Ramsey just left the uh, Special Operations Center where he's been uh, keeping up to, uh, to date with what's been happening in the city, and I'm going to pass the phone to him right now. Uh, Chief, uh, what, can you, uh, what can you tell us about what's been happening in the city today? Well, as far as the uh, police department goes, okay. we've um, called back in officers uh, from other shifts. We were going on a 12-hour shift. Uh, 7 to 7. Uh, we've got extra people out around all government buildings, both federal and local. Uh, the mayor um, has requested that the D.C. National Guard be activated. They are assisting us right now with traffic control to try to uh, uh, take care of some of the obvious traffic congestion that we've had around the city. And right now, that's pretty much uh, where we are right here in, um, in the district. Paul, are you still with us? I can't hear you. Oh, Chief, uh, thank you very much. We didn't realize you were still on with us. Can you uh, hear us here in the studio? This is Mike Landis and Tracy Neal. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Chief, this has got to be devastating for you to see this happen in your city. You've been getting ready for possible terrorism toward the end of the month, uh, the beginning of the IMF World Bank talks, and now uh, you've got something right in your own backyard. Uh, you must uh, have some preparation, I would guess, as you were getting ready for the other event. Well, we do have a, uh, uh, our command center was uh, just about uh, ready. It's been activated. Uh, fortunately, it was far enough along for us to be able to, uh, to activate it. And uh, we're working along with the Secret Service and the FBI uh, to try to coordinate our response and also to, uh, to go through all the information that's coming in. Some of it's accurate, some of it's inaccurate, uh, so that we know exactly what we're doing. But uh, things have settled down a little bit now. We've got a plan in place in terms of uh, traffic control protection of government buildings, both federal and local, and um, uh, we'll just take it a step at a time. Hey, Chief, you were talking about accurate and inaccurate information that was coming in. There had been some reports of looting in Georgetown. I understand from the mayor that that is not correct uh, and that D.C. schools are open. There, there's a lot of uh, misinformation floating around out there. Yeah, there's an awful lot of misinformation floating around, bomb threats and various other things, too. I think that people just need to take a deep breath, calm down. Uh, we're trying to get information out to people uh, as quickly as we can, but it needs to be accurate information. And, it, and uh, one of the difficulties right now is people hear things and then they start to repeat it before it's verified. Clarify something for us then, sir, if you would. Uh, was there something that took place outside the State Department building today? And if so, what was it? Well, uh, we're not exactly sure what, if anything, took place there. We have, uh, there were some earlier reports about uh, explosions and things of that nature. Uh, that's not accurate. 
Um, and again, there, there's information about that and, and various other sites. Uh, but we have to go by and, and just kind of uh, just sift through all this stuff to find out exactly what it is we have, what if anything has taken place. But right now, uh, we are not aware of anything that has happened actually inside the city. Um, the Pentagon is as close as right now that we know there's been an, uh, an actual attack. Well, Chief, the mayor was asking people to stay home after the state of emergency was declared so that uh, the, the emergency vehicles could get through, whether it's, with, whether it's your officers in patrol cars or EMS with ambulances. Uh, I guess that, that you would support that and reiterate that for folks at home. Well, there's absolutely no question about it. Right now, we just need to keep streets as clear as we can. Uh, people need to just, uh, you know, um, uh, not panic, but, uh, you know, get home and just... Uh, keep the TV or radio on because we'll be passing a lot of information along, but we'll do so through the media. That's the best way right now of being able to do it. Sir, can you tell us one thing?